When you think of Sega, what's the first game to come to mind? Sonic? Fantasy Star? Maybe you're a bit older and your heart screams Golden Axe. Or you're a weeb and all you can think of is Hatsune Miku. Don't worry, so am I. Not that I'm judging, these are some awesome games, but your first thought probably wasn't Yakuza. Which is weird, because the series has been around for over 15 years with most entries actually releasing in the West and reviewing very well across the board, but no one talks about it. Well, until Sega decided to honor the franchise's 10th anniversary back in 2015 and released Yakuza 0 onto the world, and since then no one can shut up about the series anymore, so we're gonna check it out today. What is good everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Backlog Project where we play through a gigantic list of games to find out which of them is worth putting onto your backlog. Got a game you'd like to see on the show? Check the description of the video to take part in our weekly poll where you get to decide the next game I'll review. I know, I know, you guys voted for this one weeks ago and I never got around to it, so let's get right into it. Alright, before I start a new game, I like to get an idea of how long it's actually going to take. So, let's see here. Yakuza 0. There we go. And... Yakuza 0 starts with the single best video game opening known to mankind. A cinematic reel showing what looks like a YouTube best moments montage of the craziest show in television history, while you are bombarded by an assortment of crazy guitar riffs, punchy bass and drums that make JoJo openings sound tame. And you know what the best thing is? The game delivers on that impression. In the 80s of fictional Kamurocho, a red light district of Tokyo, the story begins with Kiryu Kazuma, our protagonist and low-ranking Yakuza in the Dojima family, beating up a debtor on a collection run. He takes what he came for, leaves the man lying on the ground and walks through the city's nightlife without a care for anybody else. He gets stopped by some party people looking for a fight that quickly pull back when they see his blood-smeared face. Yakuza are feared among the general populace and most wouldn't dare to even speak to them, much less try to start a fight. The game goes to great lengths to ensure that players can feel that even though Kiryu is only 20 years old, he doesn't fit in with other people his age because he lives a completely different life. This will come into play later, but just keep that in mind for now. Fast forward a bit to Kiryu returning the money he just collected to the loan shark who contracted him and after a short talk about Yakuza having it hard in modern society, we finally get in control of the actual game. Have you been paying attention so far? If so, you've seen that the game features four different kinds of cutscenes. First. The photorealistic, cinematic ones that happen regularly in the story but rarely anywhere else. Second, voice acted and choreographed in-engine cutscenes used mostly in the story or important side content. Third, non-voiced, conversational cutscenes that mostly consist of characters talking and moving little to none, and these weird visual novel-like almost but not quite still images that sometimes pop up in the story. Now, I can excuse the third kind, even if it seems a little like a late PS2 to early PS3 game, because the game is huge and not every little side story could feasibly be animated as well as the main plot, especially when the story cutscenes look as incredible as they do. But I cannot fathom who thought the fourth kind was a good idea. I can't even really fathom what they are, to be honest. If somebody can explain to me what these totally out of place conversation sections are and how they came into existence, please tell me in the comments. I would very much like to get this off my mind. After finishing his collection job, Kiryu decides to go on a night out with his best friend and orphan brother Nishikiyama. When they get something to eat at a ramen shop, they notice that the news on TV says something about a person being killed in the middle of the city. The same person that Kiryu just beat up a few hours back. People dying on a collection job is obviously a big no-no, so Kiryu promptly gets called in by the family big shots, the three Dojima lieutenants, Kuze, Amano 
and Shibusawa. As the honorable guy he is, Kiryu is willing to accept punishment for his negligence, even though he didn't kill the guy. But when he finds out that this might all be a plot to get to Kiryu's father figure Kazama's spot as the next in line as the leader of the Dojima family, because everything Kiryu does falls back on his patron. We're still talking about Yakuza here, they're big on honor and accountability. Kiryu decides to leave the family and find the real culprit behind this crime to clear his, and in turn Kazama's name. The game also features a second protagonist, Majima Goro, a veteran Yakuza that got kicked out of his family for treason and is now forced to live his life as a civilian trying to earn enough money with his cabaret to buy himself back in. When it becomes clear that earning the money will be much easier than anticipated, his family decides to add a little extra condition to the deal. Majima has to kill Makimura Makoto, the presumable leader of a prostitution ring. As if that wasn't enough, when he tries to make the hit on the guy, he finds out that Makimura is actually not a despicable guy selling women, but a young blind girl working as a chiropractor. At this point, I just want to say that Majima's introduction is by far the best character intro I have ever seen, perfectly depicting not only what he's all about, but also setting the tone for his story arc. The music, the atmosphere, the animation, and unbelievable cinematography are just an absolute work of art and I need to show some respect for it here because I am flabbergasted by how good it is every time I watch it. And believe me, I've completed this game, playing through it three times for that, and this is one of the scenes, the others would be spoilers, I've never skipped. If this sounded extremely complicated for a game about beating people up, that's because it is. Yakuza Zero's story is incredibly deep, with a plot that unravels ever further the more you get into it, involving a staggering amount of memorable characters, intrigue after intrigue and twists that you won't see coming until they're almost right up your face. The main story is probably best compared to a very detailed multi-season series, not only in the way it is presented, but also how long it is. 30 hours for your first playthrough seems like a decent estimate if you don't take take part in any side activities. Cutscenes look incredible and the city is beautifully crafted to look and feel like a Japanese red light district in the 80s, blinding lights around every corner with hundreds of people walking around and enjoying the nightlife. There is some incredible attention to detail in this game, with every building having their name on it, as do businesses and hundreds of different posters all over the city, with details going as far as fictional phone numbers. Combat also looks visceral, with fluid animations, money flying everywhere when hitting somebody, and the most brutal and this hurts to see, but I can't look away special moves I've ever seen. The game's soundtrack is absolutely phenomenal, and I find it hard to find any other words for it. Not only is every song perfectly synced to the part of the game it's associated with, there's also one for everything. Yakuza 0 features over 80 full-length tracks, making for over 3 hours of music that ranges from some of the craziest rock and funk arrangements I've ever heard, to tech beats that could easily play in the hottest of clubs, and I can promise you that every single one will get your head banging. I always listen to a game's soundtrack when writing the scripts for these reviews, and listening to Yakuza's OST tripled the amount of time I spent on this just by me always getting distracted by how incredible the music is. Yakuza Zero's soundtrack is literal perfection, and that is an undisputable fact of life. Gameplay is big in Yakuza, so this section will be a good deal longer than usual, but I promise you that listening through it will be worth it and you'll want to jump right into the game at the end. The opening didn't lie to you. Yakuza 0 is a game all about buff dudes fighting each other and a lot of your playtime is spent doing exactly that, beating the living shit out of thugs punks and other Yakuza, and each of the two protagonists has four combat styles to do just that. Kiryu can choose between the following, Brawler, which gives him a good combination of fast and heavy hits, blocks, grabs and finishers called heat actions, a very well-rounded style that will probably fit most people. 
Rush, a style that tries to break guards and overwhelm enemies with incredibly fast combos and footwork at the loss of damage, grabs and some of your best heat actions. Beast, upon which Kiryu turns into an absolute tank that can take almost any hit without staggering and those he can't at least become blockable. He also automatically picks up items from his surroundings mid-combo to beat enemies up with street cones, shop signs and even weapons an enemy might have dropped. This is perfect for those of you who want to go ape shit on any and all enemies that dare to get in your way. Makes you incredibly slow though. The Dragon Style, which you can unlock by doing a long side quest, and that is basically God Mode. Combining most of the aspects of other styles with crazy damage output, counters, and by far the strongest heat actions in the game. Majima also has four styles, but they are completely different. Thug Style gives you the moveset you would expect from someone who doesn't have anything to lose. You can slip behind enemies to break their necks, poke them in the eyes to make them vulnerable for a heat action, and even steal their weapons. Slugger, in which Majima pulls out a baseball bat from who knows where, and this this style focuses solely on that bat. Swinging, doing combos and even using it as the base for a high velocity face kick are part of your moveset here and since you can't do full combos with normal weapons, this is your playstyle if you're into going ham with your favorite piece of metal. Breaker is probably the most unique of all the 8 styles in the game. Majima fights by breakdancing, oh yes, this style is focused on fast, wide-range attacks that will keep your enemies in a stun lock while you clear out all of them at once. Not very useful against enemies that don't get staggered like bosses, but highly effective for gang fights and that coveted street cred. The Mad Dog style, Majima's equivalent to Kiryu's dragon in that getting it involves clearing Majima's largest side quest and it is scarily overpowered. He pulls a knife and goes to town with it, slashing everything and moving like a wild animal. Just as dragon style, this is where Majima's strongest heat actions are found, most of them erasing multiple bars of HP of an enemy. Each of these also has their own skill tree that will give you new moves, passives, functionality to your existing moveset and even heat actions. Leveling these up costs money, which is the only currency in the game and gained not only by fighting but basically any activity you can do in Yakuza 0. This might seem like a weird decision gameplay wise, not to earn XP but instead use your everyday currency to level up but makes perfect sense when you consider the setting of the game. The 80s in Japan were a time of extreme excess. The country was in an economical bubble that was almost ready to burst, so a lot of people had a lot of money and were spending it left and right. You can switch freely between these styles in combat, even mid-combo if you have finished your skill trees towards the end of the game, so if you like multiple of them, you don't have to be afraid of being locked into something. The heat actions I talked about can only be performed when you have enough heat gauge, which is basically just a special meter that fills up as you fight and are in the right situation. Like kicking a guy's face when he's on the ground or swinging a traffic cone at him when you've got one on hand. There is a staggering amount of these and most of them are animated so well and in detail that you will never get tired of them. The game also features equipable weapons that are mostly useless due to not being able to combo with and also breaking after a few uses, and armor that gives you special effects like earning more money or seeing enemies on the map. The complexity of the gameplay ranges from spamming random attacks throughout the whole game to a delicate dance of attacking, dodging and switching styles according to the situation based on your chosen difficulty. I've heard many people say that Yakuza combat is easy and mindless, but these people haven't played the game on legend difficulty and had to deal with no continues in sections that are sometimes more than an hour long and enemies that easily kill you in one combo if you miss a dodge. I like the approach of giving players looking for a challenge exactly that, tightly packed in a satisfying and deep combat system, but also having the ability to scale it down to ridiculously easy if you're just playing the game for the story or looking badass while tearing shit up. That said, if you're only in it for the achievement, you can just grind your characters to max level and go into New Game Plus on Legend to pummel anything to death regardless of difficulty settings.
Apart from combat, Yakuza 0 also features an incredible amount of side stories, 100 to be exact, with some of them being only a few minutes long while others will take you hours. And believe me when I tell you that these aren't your boring run-of-the-mill side quests, they aren't called stories for nothing, because every single one of them is a masterpiece of comedic storytelling and absolutely worth doing on their own merit, without even mentioning any rewards or completion bonuses. I don't want to spoil too much here since you really need to go into these as blind as you possibly can, but to just name a few examples, you'll be teaching a dominatrix how to properly talk down to her clients, infiltrate a pyramid scheme cult and take a job as Michael Jackson's bodyguard. I told you that to unlock each character's last style, you had to complete a long side quest, right? Let's talk about these. Each character has their own business to take care of, which in itself is one large minigame or side story that could easily be its own game, but somehow they just put it into Yakuza 0. Kiryu gets to lead a real estate company, in which he has to try to buy up as much of Kamurocho's properties as possible and put money into upgrading them to make him as much money back as humanly possible. At the start, this is a rather simple minigame of buying up a few small shops, renovating them and assigning your employees to guard the property and it seems like a mindless money sink with how little you make back. The further you get into it though, the more money your businesses make and you'll soon be swimming in cash. Sometimes your security messes up and you need to go down to your properties and take care of any problems yourself and the whole thing is even tied into its own substory with different characters, boss fights and nods to the main story. Majima makes use of his experience as the Lord of the Night and takes over a failing cabaret club which is basically a place where people go to spend time with hostesses employed by the club to talk, flirt and party. Your job here is twofold, manage your staff and run the club when it opens for the night. The former is done by talking to the girls to increase their social skills, going on mock dates with them and even dressing them up with an impressive amount of clothes and accessories to make them more attractive to certain customer types and build an army of women able to cater to any and all guests that might stumble in. And when they stumble, you're there to make sure they don't leave. Working a shift at the club is like a very simple management simulation. Customers come in, you place them at an empty seat or have them wait with one of your free hostesses that preferably fits their tastes and let them have their fun. Once in a while a customer might need something like a new drink or ashtray and your hostesses will give you a sign to know which it is, so remember them. There's a bit more nuance to this, but I think you get the idea. The real estate is a fun side activity, especially when you're in the early stages where you need to carefully think about which places to buy and who to assign to them. It doesn't really go any deeper than that though and is mostly used to generate income once you finish the sub story. Majima's Club on the other hand is a lot of fun to play even after you've finished the associated story arc. There's just something very rewarding about spending the time making sure your staff setup is able to take care of the patrons you invite and then pulling off some quick chains of serving to their needs and never letting them get dissatisfied. Also, the music here is just so good. Alright, after this deep dive into the gameplay and side quests of Yakuza, I think we can safely conclude that... Wait, what do you mean I only talked about the combat? Of course I did, what else would I talk about? You can do what? Karaoke? Alright, give me the mic now. I'm singing for you. Baka mitai kodomo na no ne. Yume o oteki zu tsuite. I love you どうしてさよならは言えたのダメだねダメよダメなのよ
あなたが好きで好き過ぎてどれだけ強いを避けてもゆがままに思い出がバカみたい With that out of the way, let's talk about minigames. How about a list of all the things you can do in Yakuza Zero? Aside from karaoke, you can go fishing, bowling, hit the batting cages, build a miniature car and drive in races with it, play four different classic Sega games like Fantasy Zone at the arcade, manage an illegal weapons shop, bet on women in an underground catfight wrestling tournament, dance your heart out at the disco. Play darts and pool at the local bar, go to a telephone club to call girls and try to get them to meet you, play shogi, which is basically Japanese chess, and even watch Japanese adult films at the video booth. You didn't think I'd show you that, did you, you pervs? Oh, and since we're talking about Yakuza here, you obviously can't forget betting some money on classic Western and Japanese games and illegal gambling rings. There's Blackjack, Texas Hold'em, Roulette Tables, and Baccarat alongside Silu, Chohan, Oichikabu, Koi Koi, and even a full fledged version of Mahjong to rake in some extra cash. Or lose a lot if you suck at that stuff even half as much as I do. With that many activities, you'd be right to expect that they are very shallow and don't offer much in terms of complexity or fun gameplay. But the game yet again manages to subvert expectations and make every single one of them into something that you can easily spend hours on. Most of these games are completely flashed out minigames on the level of an activity in Wii Sports. A fully playable game with all rules intact and often even some special modes to go along with it. Don't want to play normal pool? Well, here are four different game modes, among those popular types like Nine Ball and Rotation, as well as a fifth mode called Puzzle Pool with nine different puzzles to solve. And this depth is true for all of these activities. Some even go even further and could easily be their own game, like the miniature racing and Mahjong. It's absolutely Bonkers how much work the devs have put into all of these minigames. And I know this section was long, but you can't talk about Yakuza Zero without giving these side activities their well deserved praise. You might be wondering if all of that stuff is just there for mindless fun or if it serves some purpose, and it does. While only some of these activities are actually featured in the story or side quests, all of them are required for completion. Yakuza Zero features an in game completion list that tracks everything you do in the game and gives you specific goals to earn. These can range from simple things like earning a set amount of money or running for a specific distance to very specific tasks like going out with a full straight and mahjong, which means you need all numbered tiles of the same kind on a single hand and win with that hand. There are hundreds of these challenges, and each one you complete gives you CP, completion points, that can be spent at the CP exchange for goodies and passive bonuses like being able to sprint longer or earning more money. This list also massively helps players to get motivated to not only complete the game, but also try out all the different activities in the process. The only problem here is that some of these challenges are very hard to pull off or take a lot of time. I easily spent over Five hours on Mahjong alone because not only do you have to learn how the game even works, which is difficult enough as it is, you also need to actually win games and in very specific ways at that. If you're someone like me who enjoyed all the side activities on their own merit, except for the catfight club, fuck that shit, and didn't mind learning games inside of my game, you'll have an amazing and long time completing Yakuza Zero. If, however, you are mostly here for the general gameplay and would only do the side stuff for the achievements, don't bother. You'll likely burn out before you even get to the hardest challenges, and spending upwards of 150 hours doing something you don't even enjoy is really not worth your time.
Now before we get into my verdict on Yakuza 0, if you enjoyed this video so far, and I hope you did because it was a ton of work, it would be awesome if you could hit that like button because it really helps in spreading this video to more people. Thank you. Yakuza 0 might be the best game I've ever played. The story is incredible, with deep and varied characters, a plot that seems simple at first but unravels into something much bigger, and cutscenes that feel like they come straight out of a big budget Hollywood production. Just that this one doesn't stop after 90 minutes. The soundtrack is equally incredible, with over three hours ranging from rock and electro beats that will get your inner Yakuza roaring to jazzy dance tunes making you feel right at home in the nightlife of 80s Japan. And to top it all off, there's the combat that gives casual players an easily accessible beat-em-up while offering enough depth to make higher difficulty playthroughs strategic and tense. Did I say top it off? Oh wait, it's not topped off by a long shot. Yakuza also offers by far the most memorable side quests in any game I've played and some of the funniest shit you would never expect to come out of a game about the Japanese crime scene. And the cherry on top are the bazillion minigames this title offers, although it almost feels like an insult calling them mini because of how fleshed out they are. Now that doesn't mean the game is perfect. The graphics outside of cutscenes can be a bit hit or miss, some segments of the game feel a little too dragged out and you could almost get a bachelor's degree in the time it takes to complete this title. Although completing it basically means you've got a high level degree in Mahjong, so you at least get some real world worth out of it, right? Yakuza 0 is the gift that keeps on giving. Every time you think you've seen everything the game has to offer, something new comes along and in almost all cases, that something is fun enough to distract you from your original objective for at least a few hours. The game is an absolute must play and if you still haven't gotten around to it, I highly recommend to do so right now because I promise you, you will not regret it. Just maybe don't complete the game if you value your sanity. Have you already surrendered your life to the Yakuza series? If not, what's wrong with you? By the way, did you know I'm streaming on YouTube every Monday and Friday? Check the schedule on the channel page, see what games we're playing and drop by sometime. Thank you very much for watching and remember to always keep that backlog rolling.